This, uh, this talk is based uh, on my uh, work with uh, Yunfei Gu, Subir Tsajdev, and Grisha Tarnopolsky. Um, so, this is about uh, a modification of uh, the SYK model. And let me begin with the introduction and mention uh, the original SYK model. Actually, the complex SYK model is closer to the original Sajif and Ye model, so it happens. But anyway, this model is simpler. Uh, oops. Uh, the Majorana SYK model contains N Majorana sites uh, with Majorana separators chi j, those green dots. And uh, the Hamiltonian uh, is this. Uh, it's a fourth order Hamiltonian. One can also consider uh, Hamiltonians of order 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. And uh, uh, the couplings are random. They have a zero mean, and uh, the second moment is uh, proportional to uh, n to the minus 3 to get a good thermodynamic limit. And j is the coupling constant. Uh, so this is a brief history of this model. Uh, this uh, system is interesting because it's analogous uh, to an extremal black hole. Uh, now, uh, what can we calculate in this system? Uh, we can calculate uh, the green function. Uh, and of course, uh, this calculation uh, requires uh, some assumptions. Uh, the model is not exactly solvable, but uh, it becomes exactly solvable uh, in, in these limits uh, when the number of sites is large and beta j is large. Uh, so uh, the green function uh, it, uh, has a power law uh, with exponent delta uh, equal to 1 over q. q is the number of interacting sites, uh, the order of interaction. Uh, in addition to uh, fermionic correlators, one can consider uh, collective modes. And those collective modes, of course, affect uh, the fermionic correlators. Uh, the effective action for one of uh, uh, collective modes, so-called reparameterization of Schwarzschild mode, is given by uh, the Schwarzschild action. This is the Schwarzschild derivative, and uh, the coefficient can only be computed numerically. Uh, this coefficient uh, enters uh, some thermodynamic formulas. Uh, this is um, uh, 1 over beta expansion, 1 over beta j expansion uh, uh, for uh, the free energy minus the free energy. And uh, it has uh, uh, this leading term, which is uh, not interesting. The second term is interesting because it gives uh, extensive entropy uh, in the zero temperature limit. And uh, this limit is such that uh, we first take n to infinity and then uh, take uh, beta j to infinity, keeping uh, this relation. Then uh, the entropy has a finite limit in, in um, for a beta j going to infinity. And uh, also, uh, there is uh, another term corresponding to the uh, specific heat. Uh, this formula is only valid under uh, these assumptions, but uh, one can uh, consider beta j of the order of n and also calculate uh, uh, the partition function. And uh, one can also calculate uh, the corresponding density of states which has uh, an exponential large factor and uh, some universal function, uh, the cinch of the uh, square root of E. And uh, this is a cartoon. Uh, the energy levels are discrete, but uh, near uh, the ground state, there are exponentially many energy levels. Uh, the ground state is not dangerous. Uh, there is just an exponential large uh, density of states uh, uh, down to very close to the ground state. And uh, this curve approximates uh, this discrete spectrum by a continuous spectrum. So we would like to generalize these results uh, to the complex uh, case. Uh, it's a, a model with complex fermions, and this model uh, is uh, u1 invariant. Uh, so there are q over 2 uh, psi operators and q over 2 psi dagger operators. And uh, again, 
the second moment's uh, uh, scale appropriately, uh, let me assume that j equals 1, and uh, uh, the expansion will be uh, just in beta, not uh, uh, j times beta. Uh, this model was invented multiple times, and first it uh, appeared uh, as a model of a nucleus, then Sajj Fenier proposed uh, a similar model, uh, and Sajdev in 2015 proposed uh, this exact model. Now, the new feature of this model is the conserved charge. It's a U1 charge. Uh, it can be defined like this, uh, such that uh, at occupation number uh, one half, uh, Q is zero, we're subtracting N over two. And one can also define a specific charge in terms of the expectation value uh, of uh, the actual charge Q, which is an integer or half integer, and we divide it by n, and that is the specific charge, the curly Q. Uh, the uh, grand partition function uh, is what uh, we're interested in, uh, and also the imaginary uh, time green function, which is defined like this. And uh, the charge uh, defines the asymptotics uh, of G at uh, very small times. Uh, the Beer-Green function uh, is given by this formula. It's uh, the inverse of, of the Beer-Green function. It has uh, delta prime, the kinetic term, and also a term with a chemical potential. And uh, this is called little sigma. So uh, these are the basic definitions. Now. Uh, some calculations are completely analogous uh, to the Majorana SYK model. We just uh, uh, calculate Feynman diagrams uh, with disorder, uh, disorder average interactions, and uh, uh, we get various terms in the expansion uh, of the green function. Uh, the no dominant terms are, are melonic, so-called melon diagrams, and uh, this um, box shows why uh, those diagrams are leading. Uh, if we consider uh, this disorder average interaction is proportional to n to the minus 3 for uh, the q equals 4 model. But uh, when we sum uh, over intermediate indices, uh, this number is multiplied by n cubed, and we get the number of the order of 1. So this diagram is of the order of 1. But uh, a diagram like this, like this uh, is of the order of n to the minus 2. So uh, we only keep uh, sufficiently simple diagrams, which can be uh, written as this series. And uh, this uh, gray circle is the self-energy, and it's given by that diagram in, uh, with uh, thick lines. Uh, now, oops. Uh, the diagrammatic, uh, diagrammatic series can be, it can be written in terms of the schwinger dyson equation. Uh, this series uh, corresponds to uh, G equal to minus uh, uh, sigma tilde, where sigma tilde is a combination of uh, the self-energy sigma and uh, the kinetic term little sigma, the inverse uh, Berggren function. And uh, the self-energy is in turn represented in terms of the green function. Uh, solutions of these equations uh, correspond to saddles of uh, an effective action, uh, the G sigma action. And uh, this G sigma action is slightly different from the uh, Majorana G sigma action because the order of arguments matters. Uh, and, uh, for example, here we have tau 1, tau 2 uh, in one factor and tau 2, tau 1 in, in the other factor. Now, when we solve the schwinger dyson equations, uh, we get uh, this solution in the IR at zero temperature. And uh, this solution is asymmetric. Uh, there is an asymmetry parameter E, curly E. Uh, so for positive tau, uh, it has E to the uh, plus pi E, 
And for negative tau, it's e to the minus uh, pi e. So there is some asymmetry in the infrared. And uh, the same asymmetry can be formulated uh, in the frequency domain rather than time domain. Uh, curly e and theta are related. But they're not fixed. If we just solve the uh, Schwindler-Dyson equation in the IR, we cannot uh, easily find, find uh, curly E or theta as a function of the chemical potential. So uh, one problem is uh, to find uh, these numbers, uh, the IR parameters, in terms of uh, some UV parameters. And uh, as you'll see, uh, although the chemical potential is related uh, to those parameters in a complicated way, the charge uh, has some rather simple universal relation on the next slide. And uh, we can also write uh, the green function at finite temperature uh, in this plot. Uh, the middle region is uh, uh, the IR region, and uh, uh, this asymptotics is valid uh, in the IR region, this asymptotics is valid in the IR region. And in the UV, uh, there is something different, but uh, uh, the extreme values uh, are 1 half minus Q and uh, 1 half plus Q. So uh, there is a, uh, some asymmetry in the UV region as well as in the IR region. And uh, they are related in a funny way. Uh, first. Uh, curly E and theta are related. This is just by Fourier transform. But uh, the relation between curly Q, the specific charge, and theta is non-trivial. And it was first discovered by uh, George Perkalay and Sajdiff in year 2000. Uh, they used uh, a method similar to uh, the Lettinger word derivation uh, of uh, the relation between the Fermi, uh, Fermi momentum and the number of particles in the Fermi liquid. Uh, it's, uh, Lettinger uh, theorem. However, the derivation was uh, uh, rather uh, complicated, uh, and uh, we found uh, in this paper three new derivations, uh, which uh, are probably more transparent. Uh, through uh, IR regularization, uh, this derivation uh, will be shown in uh, subsequent slides uh, using uh, RG flow of Q and E, and also using a bulk picture. So this, pap uh, this paper uh, appeared on Halloween, and uh, there is uh, some feature called spooky propagator. <laughs> I'll show you later. Uh, other results uh, include the effective action. The effective action uh, can be written in terms of uh, uh, three parameters. Uh, curly E is a global parameter. It's just a number. Uh, and there are two functions. Uh, phi is the reparameterization of time, or the short chain mode. And lambda, or lambda tilde, is a, a U1 mode. It corresponds to uh, a gauge transformation, basically. Cha a change of uh, uh, the apparatus uh, size sub j for all j in the same way. And uh, the effective action is rather complex. It has uh, uh, some part uh, that doesn't in involve any functions. It just involves uh, this f of mu, which is uh, the free energy at zero temperature uh, per side. Uh, and uh, it involves this uh, curly E. Uh, the spectral asymmetry parameter in the infrared, uh, which uh, has a certain equilibrium value. And it also has uh, this number n, the winding number of lambda tilde. Uh, at equilibrium in the thermodynamic limit, uh, lambda tilde, sorry, n is 0. Uh, there is no winding. But in principle, it could be some winding. And uh, there is some function. Uh, which is le the Legendre transform of the zero temperature entropy. Uh, it enters the effective action. And uh, the functional terms include the Schwarz chain and uh, uh, this gradient term, grad basically gradient squared, uh, the gradient of uh, lambda. Uh, now, 
uh, alpha s, uh, it's written as a constant. In principle, it depends on uh, uh, curly E. But uh, this depend uh, dependence is uh, uh, not very sensitive. And uh, from this effective action, we can also obtain a, a very nice relation previously observed by uh, uh, Parkley and George, uh, that the derivative uh, of uh, the zero temperature entropy with respect to Q uh, equals curly E. And that has to do with the Legendre transform. Uh, it all follows from uh, gauge invariance and uh, the locality of the effective action. Uh, more general actions uh, that are non-local occur as uh, corrections uh, at finite temperatures and not uh, uh, close to zero temperature. Uh, these are some other results uh, in our paper. We computed the charge compressibility. Uh, actually, Grisha Tornopolsi com uh, computed the charge uh, compressibility numerically by three different methods. Uh, we also found the density of states in the sector with a given charge Q. And uh, it's all very similar to uh, the ordinary SYK model. There is the same Schwarzschild density of states. Uh, but uh, depending on Q, there is a different ground state energy. Each Q sector has a different ground state energy given by this expression. And also, uh, the exponential prefactor depends on Q. And uh, the dependence is such th uh, that uh, when we add one unit of charge, uh, the pre-exponential pre factor changes uh, by uh, 2 pi e. The exponent changes by uh, 2 pi curly e. Uh, so uh, this formula uh, is very natural physically, but we derived it from the effective action. So, this is a, a summary uh, of main results in the paper. Uh, most of the results are, are not very new, but uh, we have uh, various derivations that uh, elucidate uh, the nature of this model and the nature of the effective action and so on. Uh, in, in the re remainder of my talk, I want to uh, do two things. First, I want to show the derivation of the relation between uh, curly E and curly Q. Uh, using uh, a time domain regularization. And I'll do it slowly, and it's uh, nice and simple. Uh, you, you might enjoy it. And uh, there is another uh, thing which is also very simple, uh, uh, zero temperature entropy calculated using a spooky propagator. So I'll, I'll uh, just go slowly through uh, those steps. So we want to uh, find a relation between curly Q that defines uh, the green function at very short times and uh, uh, curly E. But uh, first, let's uh, talk about curly Q. Uh, this quantity has a nice def definition in the G sigma formalism. Uh, let me start with rewriting uh, the definition of curly Q, the specific charge, in terms of the green function we integrate against uh, the delta function of time, and uh, uh, delta of tau equals minus uh, tau times delta prime of tau. This delta prime of tau appears in the uh, inverse gr uh, bare green function, uh, little sigma of tau, and uh, uh, that chemical potential term vanishes as we multiply uh, this expression by tau. So this is uh, the definition of curly Q. Now, uh, it can be generalized in the G sigma formalism uh, if we use an arbitrary function sigma. And it doesn't have to depend only on the difference between two times. It can be uh, in arbitrary functions, uh, let's assume it's non-singular, unlike this one. Um, that is not uh, so important. And uh, we can write uh, curly Q in, in the following way. There is some quantity J of tau 1, tau 2. It's a bilocal current. 
It's like uh, a current flowing through a wire from point tau 1 to tau 2. To tau two. And it's given by this expression. And uh, uh, this current is conserved. Uh, I'll show it on the next slide. And uh, curly Q is just uh, the total current through a cross section. Uh, this formula agrees uh, with the previous definition if uh, little sigma and g depend only on the difference of uh, two times. But in general, this formula is independent on the choice of the cross-section tau naught uh, because of the current conservation. So the uh, quantity curly Q is just uh, the total flux uh, through those wires. Uh, the conservation of the bilocal current uh, is proved uh, in the usual way, uh, like uh, uh, a word identity, uh, we can see the A1 gauge transformation of uh, G and uh, sigma tilde, but we don't transform the little sigma. Uh, when we write the effective action, uh, the, the first line, which doesn't contain little sigma, remains invariant under the gauge transformation, but uh, the second line is not invariant. And this term uh, gives rise to a non-trivial variation of the effective action. Uh, it's uh, this. On the other hand, uh, if we consider a stationary configuration of G and uh, sigma tilde, a subtle point, uh, the Schwinger-Dyson equations imply that uh, the variation of the action is zero, which uh, gives exactly the conservation of the current. At each uh, point tau 1, uh, the total current flowing out of that point is zero. Uh, it flows from tau 1 to different points tau 2 and ended up all those contribution we, uh, contributions we get uh, zero. So this is the conservation. And uh, uh, the definition of uh, curly Q is robust in some other ways. Uh, First, uh, let's, def let's express uh, little sigma as uh, the difference between uh, sigma tilde and sigma. It was the definition of sigma tilde. Sigma is the self-energy given by this expression. And uh, when we, oops. And when we plug uh, this difference in here, and uh, plug the expression for sigma, it vanishes. And so we're left with uh, the expression in the second line. Instead of uh, little sigma, we get uh, sigma tilde. Now, sigma tilde is just the inverse green function, so everything depends on the green function. And uh, uh, if uh, the green function only depends on the difference of uh, two times. We can slightly simplify the expression like this. Uh, and it's tempting to say that uh, uh, the two terms here are identical, and we can integrate each term separately and remove the factor 1 half. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work because if we try to do that, each term uh, diverges logarithmically. Uh, and uh, at different uh, places, uh, it has different signs. So in principle, we could uh, uh, get the finite number. But uh, we better be rigorous, because it's very easy to make a mistake using uh, such transformations uh, with uh, divergent or not absolutely convergent uh, integrals. Uh, so we'll keep those terms together. Uh, now, I mentioned that uh, the charge is robust. Uh, it actually depends uh, on the UV and IR asymptotics of the green function and a winding number. Uh, let me define a relative winding number. Suppose uh, there are two green functions, G1 and G2, with the same asymptotics. Uh, then we can define uh, the winding number like this. It's an integral 
of uh, uh, a total derivative, and uh, this integral is actually an integer uh, because uh, the ratio is 1 at uh, small omega and at large omega. And uh, if g1 and g2 uh, have a zero relative winding number, then uh, uh, they de uh, determine the same value of q. Uh, finally, let's calculate q. The separation of terms in the previous expression, uh, the previous expression uh, had uh, uh, two terms, right? Uh, we can separate those terms uh, by regularizing the green function. If we multiply the green function by uh, this factor with some non-zero eta, positive eta, uh, then uh, the integral becomes convergent, and uh, we can define uh, q as a limit when eta goes to zero. And uh, the same formula can be written in the frequency domain, uh, and we'll do uh, the calculation in the frequency domain. Uh, the integral can be broken into two parts. So uh, there is a, uh, this integral, uh, and we can consider it in, in the UV and in the infrared. And uh, we put a boundary, omega naught, between these two regions, such that omega naught is much smaller than 1, means uh, it's already in the IR in some sense. But uh, uh, this condition is also satisfied. So it, it's not uh, too small. And uh, we take uh, this integral in the brackets uh, for large omega. This calculation is similar to uh, the standard argument uh, by Lattingen and, and uh, Ward. Uh, for the Fermi liquid. So uh, in this limit, uh, we can ignore the regularization. We can just use uh, the actual green function and uh, write the integral as uh, this thing. We have uh, the, uh, the total uh, variation, the difference uh, of uh, this expression between omega naught and uh, infinity. At omega naught, we may use uh, the IR asymptotics. And uh, at uh, large omega, uh, the green function is odd in frequency. And using those facts, we get uh, minus 2i theta. Theta is uh, the parameter in the IR asymptotics. But uh, the most interesting thing is when we calculate the integral at small omega. Here, we cannot ignore the difference between uh, g sub eta and g. Although uh, the difference appears to be small, there is this uh, uh, small parameter eta multiplied by some function. Uh, as we do the calculation, uh, we find that uh, eta multiplies another integral, which is proportional to 1 over uh, eta. And as a result, it's just a constant. So uh, this uh, small correction eventually gives rise to uh, a constant correction. And uh, uh, that is uh, the second contribution uh, to the expression of q. And adding both contribution, uh, we get this formula. So uh, this is one derivation. It has, uh, uh, some topological flavor a little bit. Uh, let me show you uh, a related thing. It's not exactly the calculation of, of, of this function, but uh, uh, it's related to uh, that function by some uh, thermodynamic identities. Uh, that is about uh, the zero temperature entropy. Uh, let's consider the Majorana SYK model for simplicity uh, because uh, the calculation uh, is completely analogous. Uh, instead of um, Majorana fermions, uh, one needs to use a, a Dirac fermion 
in, in the complex case. So uh, we're calculating the partition function uh, per Majorana mode. And it can be written in the thermodynamic limit uh, the sum of three terms. Uh, th this is one over a beta expansion, basically. The leading term is uninteresting. We're interested in the constant term, and there are also uh, finite temperature corrections. Uh, the calculation will be done in the following way. Since uh, this quantity uh, is constant uh, for large n, uh, log z is proportional to the number of sites, and uh, we'll try to calculate uh, the ratio by adding an extra site. So uh, we consider n sites, and uh, let me call it a heat bus. It's a heat bus for the extra site. Uh, when we add uh, the extra side, uh, uh, to keep the thermodynamic limit, uh, we should do two things. Uh, first, we just add uh, that side, couple, uh, couple it to the existing side, uh, the existing sides, and calculate the difference uh, between uh, log z for the full system and uh, for the heat bath. And also, we need to just uh, the couplings between the original sites, because uh, we should maintain uh, the scaling of J with N. So J should be renormalized like this. And uh, that gives a rise to an additional term in the formula, but uh, it turns out that uh, this additional term doesn't contribute to S, because S is the constant term in the uh, 1 over beta expansion. So in the end, uh, the expression of, for the zero temperature entropy is very simple. It's uh, uh, the log of Z full minus uh, the log of Z bath regularized. And uh, regularization means the extraction of a constant term in the one over beta expansion. Uh, this is the calculation idea. First, we model the heat bath uh, by a Majorana fermion in the hyperbolic plane, represented by, by the Poincaré disk. Uh, from the perspective of that extra site, uh, uh, the existing N sites uh, uh, can only be sensed uh, in certain ways. And uh, we're interested in certain correlation functions uh, over those N sites. And we can find a particular field uh, that is uh, uh, responsible for uh, the interaction with, uh, with the extra site. And uh, its correlation function is actually the self-energy of, of uh, the SYK model. And uh, instead of using the actual heat bus uh, consisting uh, of uh, Majorana fermions, uh, in that model, we use a, a, a continuous Majorana fermion on the hyperbolic plane. And we should put uh, a Dirichlet boundary condition denoted by plus to get uh, the right correlation function. Adding the extra site and uh, adding the extra site changes the boundary condition uh, to Newman, uh, which is denoted by minus. And the corresponding correlation function is the green function. And uh, the zero temperature entropy is, is uh, the difference of two terms, uh, the Fafian of uh, the Majorana fermion with uh, uh, Newman uh, boundary condition and uh, with Dirichlet boundary condition regularized. And uh, we can calculate the, different, uh, the derivative with respect to delta because uh, it's difficult to calculate uh, the Fafian directly. The derivative is given by uh, the trace of uh, a so-called spooky propagator, which is just the difference between two propagators uh, with uh, uh, Newman uh, boundary condition and Dirichlet boundary condition. And uh, this uh, Dirichlet propagator uh, may be th uh, thought of a as a ghost. And uh, we're sub uh, subtracting two propagators. It's like a partial cancellation of ghosts. Uh, and uh, the trace uh, can be written as an integral over the entire hyperbolic plane. It's uh, the area of the hyperbolic plane uh, times something finite. 
the area of the hyperbolic plane, of, uh, of course, uh, does make sense here because it's infinite, but uh, it can be regularized by removing a boundary contribution. And uh, we can see the large enough disk d sub r uh, and subtract uh, the area and uh, the boundary length, we get a finite limit uh, of minus 2 pi. So uh, this is the summary of this calculation. Uh, for the Majorana SYK model, we get uh, a rather simple expression for uh, the zero temperature entropy. For the complex SYK model, uh, we actually calculate uh, the Legendre transform of uh, the zero temperature entropy, uh, this function uh, of curly E instead of curly Q. And that function is given by a slightly more complex integral. The use of the bulk picture simplifies UV regularization because we just need to subtract the boundary contribution. If we try uh, to do the UV regularization in a different way, um, well, it's possible, but it's easy to make a mistake. Uh, here it's uh, uh, much simpler and much more reliable. And finally, I should say that uh, I don't know the physical meaning of this Putti propagator. Uh, however, we have found some connection to the Plancherel measure uh, for the universal cover of SL2R. It's just a formal relation. Yeah, th th that's it. Thank you.